everyone, so this is chapter three of medical terminology, and this is organization of the body. Uh, so along with this, this third chapter is really that introduction to the course trying to build the base work. So we talked about prefixes and suffixes in the last chapter, and so now we start talking about the body and kind of outlining what that looks like. So um, with this, um, we start talking about uh, anatomy and physiology and everything starts to link and so part of that is understanding the levels of organization uh, going basically from elements to, to taking those atoms and forming things like um, cells and organelles and tissues organs organ systems and eventually your entire human body um, and so you start at the smallest which is atoms uh, they're you know think a periodic table of elements uh, you're looking at those particular atoms uh, that are composed of protons and neutrons. Um, and so we have 118 have been identified. Uh, I think it might actually be a little bit more. No, no, that's about right right now. So 118. Um, and really there are six main elements to our human body. So oxygen, carbon, hydrogen, nitrogen, calcium, and phosphorus. Uh, we do utilize others, but those are the six main ones for sure that comprise up most of um, our bodies. Um, and so those atoms will combine uh, to create new kind of substances. So we can take uh, hydrogen and oxygen and make water, and we know that our body is a lot of water. We have a lot of that. So um, it's important for us, and that's part of that makeup. Now, other atoms uh, will start to kind of combine and structure themselves in a way to uh, start building other um, kind of things like amino acids and proteins. Um, and so as we start working our way up, we're going to start building cells. Um, and so cells start having uh, a function. Atoms just kind of are there and, and they react with each other, but a cell start is going to have a function. It has a, a goal, something it's trying to achieve. Uh, they range in size and functionality and the way they look and the way they shape, depending on uh, what function they serve. Um, but we start looking at those that have uh, a cell membrane that kind of contains everything in them. Um, they have cytoplasm, which kind of contains all these different structures inside of it. Um, and inside of each of those cells, there are um, nucleus, which is kind of the brain of the operation. It's what contains our DNA. Um, and they have major parts that do different things like providing energy or uh, giving structure or, or just doing various things depending on the cell. And you should learn more about this if you need to as your schooling goes on. Some people may not need an in-depth understanding of all the different parts of that cell. Um, and so we have all this, and eventually cells in our bodies, will, will those cells will start to group together and will form tissues. Uh, and so we have different types of tissues in our bodies, but these tissues are basically cells that are similar. They're all grouped together. They have similar functions. They're, they're serving similar roles. Um, and so we start having the tissues build up. We have different types of tissues. If you want to look at them like muscle tissues, we have skeletal tissues, which are for, or connective tissues like bones. Um, you have epithelial tissues, uh, which are kind of think about your skin being that type of tissue. And we even have things like nerve tissue that help uh, conduct current and send messages. Now those tissues will eventually come together and will start to develop organs that have uh, more complex uh, goals. They have more complex things you're trying to accomplish, but they're comprised of uh, multiple types of tissue, uh, which are those groups of cells, and they have start having a bigger function overall. They start doing multiple things at a time because we have multiple tissues uh, coming together. Um, and so that's our organs and our organ systems all trying to achieve that. And when we put all of our organ systems together, we get our human body, in this particular chart list are organ systems. Uh, so things like our skeletal system, our muscular system, our integumentary system, which is our skin. And so this chart does a good job of uh, showing you what those are and can be found in your book as well. Um, and so once you have that body and we can kind of start seeing those things, um, when we're looking at this in a medical way, uh, we do want to look at the body and refer to the body in the same uh, way most of the time. And so this is called anatomical position. And anatomical position is when you're looking at basically this person right here. So they're standing up or laying down in a rect position. 
their head is facing forward. The only thing that this is incorrect in this image to being anatomical position is his palms actually should be facing forward. Uh, so if your palms are facing forward, so your thumbs are pointing away from you um, in this position, then that would be anatomical position. And that's how things are referred to always. Anytime in the medical world people are talking about things, um, you're always thinking about the body being in that um, and that makes a difference when you start talking about the location of certain things or the position. So um, this chapter then starts to talk about those directional and positional terms like superior and inferior, meaning above or below. Um, and so thinking about the way the body is um, kind of positioned does, does matter and that anatomical position is important, such as anterior and posterior. So one example is uh, anterior means in front of or before, and in an anatomical position, your palms are anterior of your hand. So that means that the palms are the most front part of your hand that can be seen in an anatomical position, where the back of your hand is posterior to the palm. And so that makes a difference when we refer to it that way. Um, and so there are lots of these directional terms to get familiar with because you'll refer to these things all the time uh, in this course and in other courses. Um, Lateral medial is used a lot uh, when you're looking at those, proximal and distal. Um, and so just, just get familiar with these uh, because they're going to be needed. Additionally, you're looking at things like um, positioning or in planes. Um, and so you have things like your sagittal plane that cuts you left to right, your frontal plane which cuts you front to back, uh, and then transverse planes that cut you from top to bottom. Um, and so when you're looking at these medical terms and talking about these things, you're having to keep in mind anatomical position and the planes that people are talking about because all of these things will change the word that you're looking at and the meaning of that word um, when you're looking at those particular things. You also have different body cavities. Uh, so you have your thoracic cavity that kind of holds your lungs. You have your um, abdominal pelvic cavity, which is your abdomen and your, uh, your pelvis region. And so different ways to refer to things that you're just going to have to kind of look and work through and time and error are going to allow you to kind of understand those a little bit better. Um, and so it continues to work you on. It gives you these nine abdominal regions. So um, you can start breaking some of these down and you have the pieces to look at, well, why is this top section of these nine quadrant or nine regions of the abdominal pelvic cavity why is one called the umbilical region? Why is one called the epigastric region? So kind of start breaking those words down and figuring those out. Um, we also have four quadrants, which are labeled pretty easily. Um, and so, again, your book just kind of goes through a lot of this assessment and looking at things, but then we get back into the terminology. So certain things are always labeled certain ways. So bones, you're always going to associate with the word osti or osteo. Um, if you ever hear about uh, things like the liver, you're going to look at hepta or hepto, which is always referring to the liver. And so, again, you're going to want to get familiar with these because you're going to see them again and again and again. Some of them are a little bit easier. Maybe you've heard them before. Others may not be. Um, so just continue to keep that in mind as you move forward. Um, and so now that you have a lot of this, you can, again, go ahead and start building that medical terminology, that vocabulary, start putting words together, start working with it. Your book, again, goes into great detail um, and will be helpful for you. So let me know if you have any questions.